Okay, we're back live at Strata. Day three for us, eight, four hours on the first day, eight hours live on the second day, eight hours today. Can maybe can we go longer? Strata conference is kind of day, ending today, but we are here live with all the coverage. This is SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv's flagship telecast. We go out to the top tech events, and we extract the signal from the noise. We go deep, we talk to the smartest people we can find. Uh, who have something to say and extract that signal from the noise and share that with you. And, uh, you know, obviously data is big and Twitter data, social data is huge. And uh, we're going to talk about that in this segment. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com and my co-host. I'm here with, uh, I'm here with, I am Dave Vellante of uh, Wikibon.org and we're here with Nathan Morris, who's a lead engineer at, at Twitter. Welcome, Nathan. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you for coming on. Uh, yeah. Former back type got acquired recently, uh, so congratulations yeah, on that. Ago. Thank That's, you. Uh, yeah. Fantastic. And uh, yeah. we're going to talk a little about Storm, right? Yeah. And, let's uh, chat. Now, what's the story? You developed Storm, or yeah? Or? So um, basically, when I was at Back Type, we had um, we were doing real time analytics on on Twitter actually, and you know it's a pretty hard problem. So we developed this infrastructure, Storm, to solve this problem for us, and uh, that was in development for like seven months and then we got acquired and now we're doing it at Twitter. Awesome, well, yeah. why don't you tell us you know, a little bit about Storm and then we can get into it a little bit. Sure, so I like to say that Storm does for real-time processing uh, what Hadoop did for batch processing. Uh, it, it exposes a set of general primitives for uh, real-time processing um, and lets you compose them together to do very sophisticated and fully fault tolerant um, real-time data processing workflows. Awesome, so, um, so you are, you said you were in development seven months? Seven months uh, uh, bef before we got acquired, getting acquired. Since then, I've continued development. Yeah, yeah, so, but prior to getting acquired. So, so w where were you in, in terms of actually you know, deploying the, the, the platform and, and how yeah. was it getting adopted and by whom? Yeah, so, uh, well, we didn't open source it until we got to Twitter. Um, okay. But it's right. actually gone through uh, multiple iterations. So, we had a first iteration that took a few months that was useful for us for various things and then we saw, oh, it needs some more features to do these other use cases and it's expanded since then and it's continued to expand after acquisition and even now. I, I just released a, a really cool feature recently called transactional topologies which enable fully fault tolerant exactly once processing semantics uh, which is really powerful and I'm really excited to see what other people do with it. Awesome, yeah, so it's funny, we're talking, before we came on, it was Kevin Weil we had on, I don't yeah. know if you know Kevin, yeah, he was absolutely. on a couple years ago, and he was yeah. talking about some of the limitations of, of, of Hadoop and real-timeness, and yeah. so obviously you're, you're bringing that to the platform. Yes. And uh, so talk about that a little bit. Sure, yeah, so um, I actually view Storm and Hadoop as very complementary, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so with Hadoop is about batch processing and you know, extracting insight from all of your data at once. Um, whereas Storm is about looking at data as it comes in and trying to extract as much value as you can in real time. Um, so the applications we build actually use a combination of um, some Hadoop workflows as well as some, some Storm processing. Uh, and, and basically what that lets us do is, well as soon as we get a piece of data, we can extract as much value as we can through Storm, right? But then once, once we've had the data for let's say an hour, we can extract much more value out of that through our Hadoop workflows. So you guys, Twitter data has been a fantastic developer playground uh, over the years. You've got a lot of data. Obviously, Twitter's massive. Uh, Twitter has a real-time impact that's changing the world. We've seen all the great things from Twitter um, that you guys have done, and uh, the metadata is phenomenal. So what are the challenges in real time? As, as you know, this story here is predictive analytics, real-time analytics, uh, cloud mobile social is the top themes everywhere. What are the biggest challenges that you're finding with rolling out Storm and within Twitter? I mean, you guys are constantly scaling every day. We talked with Scott Dedson, who was from Pure Storage, and obviously they want to go everything flash. Uh, he's talking about his old uh, colleagues at WebLogic are all kind of over there at Twitter now. And it's a systems company, but you got to bring the modern era here of, of systems computing, yeah. operating systems for the uh, CS chocks out there, but a new breed of, of technical chops. So can you just share with us the mindset of this new breed of systems guys plus the modern era of what real time does for yeah, the, yeah. some of the developers and comp side guys? So I think the, the biggest challenge with data processing, uh, which actually gets even harder with real time, is just fault tolerance, right? How do you make sure that um, things keep on running if like a machine dies or there's some exception or whatever. Um, how do you make sure your, your, your results stay, stay accurate and correct? Right? Given that anything can fail at any time. Um, that's the biggest challenge and 
you know, one of the, the I think the breakthrough to Storm was fig figuring out how do you do fault tolerance in real time in a way that's not complex um, and reasonable. Um, but there's actually, um, with respect to fault tolerance, there's actually two kinds of fault tolerance that I see. There's the typical fault tolerance that people talk about, which, you know, there's some technical error, like you lose a machine or, or something goes wrong. But there's another kind of fault tolerance, which I actually think is more important that people don't talk about enough, which is what I call human fault tolerance. Like if there's one thing that we've learned from software development over the years, it's that humans make mistakes sometimes. Sometimes you actually have buggy code uh, deployed to production, which can cause vast damage sometimes, right? And the way I like to build systems is just to assume that these mistakes will be made and then engineer systems in a way so that you can limit the impact and recover from that impact. Uh, and that's been a major focus for us in making our systems reliable. So my friend Andy Kessler just wrote an article for the Wall Street Journal, an op-ed piece called, uh, "Social: When Will the Social Media Elect the Next President? Because obviously Twitter is a big part of the social media uh, kind of sentiment and, and opinion forming, it's rapid uh, open sourcing of data through individuals. How much pressure does that put on the team <laughs> to know that you know, identity and trust are big issues? You guys yeah. deal with spam all the time, I know. Yeah. You constantly struggle at Twitter to kind of make sure you get the spam bots out there. How is your work, Storm, handling this tsunami of, of false data or spam data and with the demand for this kind of pressure in society to bring things like elections. We saw the Egypt thing really yeah. be really uh, game changing globally in mm -hmm. society. So talk about that dynamic, can you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, traditionally, right, these problems were very hard because you didn't really have infrastructure that could do this. So everyone was, was hand rolling their own infrastructure. And actually when, when we got to Twitter, what we found is that Twitter essentially had 10 half implemented, barely working versions of Storm internally, one for every specific use case they had. Um, so one thing that Storm lets you do is unify these problems, let your infrastructure take care of the hard stuff of fault tolerance and paralyzing things and, and all that stuff, and let, let you focus on the higher level stuff, your applications, your algorithms, your spam detection, your machine learning, um, instead of having to, to constantly worry about the, the infrastructure. Right? By, by, by pro providing general solutions for infrastructure, um, that makes it much easier to actually focus on these, these applications, which is what people actually care about. What's the biggest request that you guys are getting on your team around, from internally at Twitter and from the outside? What, what pressure is causing you guys to innovate faster? Um, kind of an esoteric question, but yeah. you know, trying to get at some of the, some of the innovations. Yeah, I mean, certainly um, scale is one of the biggest drivers of innovation. Um, if we can't scale, we don't have a product, right? Um, and certainly, you know, very few companies have the kind of, uh, require the kind of real-time scale that Twitter does, which is what has driven a lot of the innovation in, in Storm uh, and related projects. So what's next for Storm for you, for you guys as you guys evolve further? What's the next uh, chapter? Um, so, um, within Twitter, you know, we're building new applications on Storm, enabling things we couldn't do before uh, because of the um, things that Storm provides, um, and as well as migrating existing infrastructure, some of those half-broken things I was talking about um, onto Storm so that they're more reliable and more scalable. Um, otherwise, we, um, I mean, we take things on a use case by use case basis. If there's a use case we can't satisfy now, that will drive um, more feature development in Storm itself. Well, we're going to bring in Tim O'Reilly in a second, but I want to ask kind of one final question. Uh, what's it like at Twitter right now? You came from a startup, and startups are fun, um, engaging, you know, roller coaster, you know, all, the same, all those things they talk about, startups. Yeah. Twitter is it's a different kind of roller coaster, yeah. pressure cooker, uh, but huge technical challenges. What's the vibe like at Twitter? Obviously, you guys are always hiring. We know yeah. that, and uh, what, what's it like there right now? Uh, chaotic, <laughs> uh, but it's actually, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it certainly was a, uh, transition for us going from a four person team to a 800, I don't even know how many people work there, like 800, 900 person team. Um, but um, it's been like a lot of fun. There's lots of really cool data to work with. Like I think the Twitter data set's probably the most interesting data set in the world. Um, and Twitter has a very <laughs> we open. <agree. laughs> yeah. We Twitter, love, we tw love Twitter. Twitter has a very open, transparent culture. Yeah. Uh, Twitter's very committed to open source, which really vibes with me personally, as well as I think most developers, uh, which makes it really fun to not just work on the Twitter problems, but get to interact with the community. Storm has had a 
a very large community form around it. It's been a lot of fun to see what do they do with our technology uh, and so on. Well, Nathan, you know, we've had uh, you guys on, Kevin on at Hadoop World 2010. You guys done a lot of open source work. You're one of the prime examples of Hadoop early on. You guys at Twitter. Uh, we're open source content here at SiliconANGLE and Wikibon, our research team. I uh, want to congratulate you on the, on, on the Twitter team for all your work. Congratulations, keep it up. Twitter Thank is you. leading the charge in innovating kind of systems, architecture, and computing with real time predictive analytics. Uh, it's going to be the future. It's going to change elections. It's going to change public interaction. All this stuff's going to continue to work, and uh, good luck with everything, and thanks for coming on theCUBE. Absolutely, thanks okay. for having me.